What's up guys, this is John with Skate Better, and today we are doing a brand new setup. I'm gonna show you guys how I set up a deck. There's lots of different ways you can do it. This is how I do it. Um, so we have zero deck. This is an 8.5 by 32.25. Um, I've always wanted to try zero. I get really good things. Um, it's a little more concave than boards that I have in the past, so I'm gonna see what that feels like. Um, we got diamond hardware, shout out to Tory Puds. Um, got some Bones 51s. And I've been skating Spitfire for a while and Rictus, so I figured I would try Bones. A lot of people love them. Got the Bronson Raw bearings. So I've been messing with these lately, the Raws, so they pop the shields on them and been really feeling it. I like the way they sound, like the way they roll. And uh, I think they're like 30, 35 bucks, so more on the expensive side, but I think with bearings you really do get what you pay for up to a certain point. And then I got the Thunder 149. So these are made to be the width of an 8.5. A lot of people skate 148s. I might try that at some point, but I figured I would have the right trucks to go with the right board. These are hollow lights. And then I got some mob standard grips. So I will be trying Shake Chunk in the future. And I've had Grizzly in the past, and I had mob on my deck now, and I was really liking the mob, so I'm gonna keep it rolling with mob. So um, yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you need to do is grip your board with the grip tape. So I always like to make sure there's no dust or dirt particles on the board. Looks pretty clean. Um, this is an 8.5, a 2.25, so, or a 32.25, so there's going to be barely enough room in this guy for the script tape, but we should be able to make it work, so, pretty simple, get the sticker off the backing, there's a lot of different ways you can grip a deck, but this is how I love to do it, so the most important thing is making sure that it's centered, because once it's on, it is on, so we're going to make sure that we are centered from left to right, that we are also centered from front to back. So we're just gonna gently place it on the tips like so. Making sure once again that we are centered. I always like to make sure I have enough room and then I'm gonna gently press down in the middle like this. Work my way towards the edges. Get out any air bubbles that I have going on. Mob has these little perforated holes in them so Usually it's pretty easy, no big deal. Shouldn't really have any air bubbles, just kind of press it down. You can run your fingers along it. A lot of people will go like this with something or whatever, just to get out all those little air bubbles, little kinks. And that is step one. All right, so this is an optional step. Some people do it, some people don't. Um, but if you want, you can take skate tool, screwdriver, or whatever, just something with a, like a solid round edge and you just kind of go along the edge of your grip tape and you'll see that it's making a little outline of the deck. And I'm gonna use that outline to cut it, trace it, and cut it. So, I'm gonna get this going on. And like, originally I didn't understand what the point of this was. I thought it was supposed to make it easier to cut, and I don't think it really does that. But I found, is what it really does is just give you a line to cut up against when you're when you're cutting it. So once again, something like that. Just really making sure those edges are on there. Totally optional. So we'll just go in and cut. And I'm gonna tell you something that I learned that you don't want to do is you don't want to start taking these little edges here, and you don't want to start pushing them down on the board because it's going to make it more challenging for you to cut. So you want to keep it flat like this. You don't want to bend the grip tape over. Just keep it nice and flat um, just like this and you shouldn't really have any issues. Alright, so now we'll get on to the cutting. Okay, so now we're going to cut the grip tape which I think is one of the most important parts and if you mess it up, it's okay. You can do it over. I messed it up in the past. You can't just do it over with grip tape. but. Um, you can kind of refine it after you cut it if you don't cut it so great. Um, so you'll notice like on the sides of the grip, there's kind of like this little corner here. And what I can do is just make a little incision like this with my knife right up to the deck itself. And then I'm going to stick the blade in there. And I'm going to apply tension. And I'm going to move the blade towards me. And I'm just going to cut up against that line that I made for the deck. So notice how I'm angling the blade. That's what helps me get on the line. So if you hold it straight up, 
you're probably gonna have issues, but if you keep it on an angle like this, you should be able to cut pretty clean all the way around your deck. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just wanna keep that line nice and smooth. Keep tension on the grip tape. So as I go around the nose, I'm gonna flip it back around again, like this. Still keeping that tension. So I think it's one of the most important parts. You, you wanna keep the tension on the grip tape while you're doing this and really keep that knife on an angle. That's something that I found a lot of people don't share in their tutorials and I find it really helpful. So I'm just gonna finish this off. Not really worried about that, no big deal. Keep it going here. No big deal. So nice and angled, still keeping that tension on the grip. Just following that line that I made all the way around. Flip it back one more time, like this. So when you're finished with that, you will have that fresh cut if you did it right. And what some people do, what I like to do, is you just take some of this stuff, some of the excess grip tape, you can fold it up into kind of like a little vial of grippiness, and then you can sand down the edge. So you're just kind of going around, make sure those edges are nice and flush and really just on top of that. And like, don't worry about it. Like I have like a little bit of extra grip tape here. You can see it doesn't really matter. Like once you start skating, that's gonna come off. So sanding that sucker down. I personally like to sand down my edges. I feel like it makes it stick a little bit better. It's totally optional. And then some people will even take this and just go over the grip tape a little bit. And it just helps it get, be not quite as grippy. Um, off the bat so it won't destroy your shoes because new grip tape, especially mob grip tape, pretty brutal. A couple times and boom, we got a nice grip deck here, ready to go, ready for the next step. All right, so now we gotta put our hardware in so we can put our trucks on, that's the next step. So you can take little Allen, I like the Allen wrench, some people like the Phillips head, I think Allen is like an old school move, I don't really think it matters that much, I just go with Allen. Um, got the T-Pod hardware, so what we're gonna do is we have holes in the bottom for our trucks and we're just gonna put this in each one. Just pop it in just like that. So I'm just putting it on there, Boop, pop it through. Okay, pop it like it's hot, no big deal. And what I'm doing here is just creating kind of like little marker holes. So then when I come back on this side, pop them out, pop it out, pop it out. And I'm a little OCD-ish with my stuff. I don't like there to be anything weird. So I actually go through one more time on the other side. Just pop these bad boys in. Use my hole. And this is the nose of the board. Okay, I just wanna see what I got going on here. So finish this with all of your, uh, all of your holes and you will be ready for the next step. All right, so now we're ready to put our handy dandy trucks on. And always remember, the kingpin goes in. So this is the kingpin. This needs to be facing the inside of the board. If you don't do that, you're going to be messed up. But you can literally reference any skateboard that's already put together pretty much ever. You shouldn't have a problem. So I'm literally just placing this over the bolts. I'm not really too worried about it. I can always adjust it later. And I'm just going to take my little pieces of hardware here and just screw them on by hand first. So I like to do that. You can do it however you want. But it's four bolts of truck, you get them on, and then I like to go back in uh, after with the skate tool and kind of like tighten it down. So pretty simple, pretty simple move. Um, I will tell you the only thing that I do that is a little bit different in mine is um, the diamond hardware I love, it comes with a gold, a gold or you can get it with a silver or whatever. And I like to have that one bolt on the front of my board in the top right corner. Some people put it in whatever hole they want, it doesn't matter but it is like a reference point. So you always know which side of your board is the front and the back and it just makes it really, really easy. So that's something I love about Diamond Hardware. Let's throw it on there. Um, but yeah, this is the next step. So I'm gonna do this and I'll see you guys in a second.
All right, so now that we have them on by hand, we're gonna take our Allen wrench like this, and we're just gonna hold it in place on one side, take our skate tool, and tighten these suckers down, okay? So that's literally the point of that, is just to be able to tighten this all the way down. And I'm realizing that this screwdriver thing is in the way, no big deal, pop that out, pop that on. And yes, you do have to do each one individually, and you want them to be tight, like really, really tight. Um, they should not be, like see how this one is even still like popping up just a little bit? Like I will continue to tighten this until it is flush, like it is all the way in the deck, because um, that'll mess up your tricks, bro. You can't have that. So you want it definitely to be as flush as possible. And I'm gonna tighten these down, and then I'll get back to you guys in a sec. Okay, so I just wanna get a close up of this, of the hardware real quick. So you can see that it's flush with the board and you can actually even see that the hardware went into the grip tape a little bit. So that's what I look for. I wanna make sure that it's like in the grip tape. That's how I know it's flush. And if any of that's sticking up, it's probably not gonna be a good time. So now we're ready for bearings and wheels, which is probably like one of the easiest and most fun parts. So I'm gonna show you guys something. You're just gonna take off the nuts on your truck and you'll see there are these two washers on the end. There's, it always comes with two, it should have two. Um, one here and then one on the inside. So you're gonna take the top washer off and one of them stays on the inside, one of them stays on the outside and it's just like an extra little piece of friction so you don't have to worry about the nut rubbing up against the bearing um, in the wheel. So, to get your bearings on, like once again, these are the raws, so that's the back. Um, you can see the little bearing balls out there. That's the raw shield. So I'm gonna put that down because in the wheel, this should always be facing the outside of the wheel. So you would never have it in like this, always on the outside. And that's so dust gets in, dust gets out, that's the theory. So we're gonna put that down and then we're gonna put this wheel like this. And I'm just gonna press down with my hands pretty vigorously and just pop it into place just like that. And that's it, okay? So we're gonna do that with all of our bearings right now. Just get them set up in the wheels. Oh, hey, Mr. Fry, he wants to help so that we're ready to go, okay? All right, so now that we're finished with that, pretty much the last step, we're gonna put our wheels on. So once again, little washer is already in there. That, you can see it right there, it's on the edge. It's a little washer. And a lot of people put their wheels graphic out. I like it, a lot of people do graphic in. I'm a graphic in guy. Um, I don't wanna see that when I ride. I just think it looks nice and clean. So I put the little washer on, then I'll put my bolt on, hopefully and just give it a good hand twirl. Then I got, you're gonna get your skate tool and see how it's got a lot of movement right now? So I'm gonna start to tighten this sucker down. Okay, and as I tighten it, I will have less and less of that happening. So it really is more of a feel and an audio thing. And I like there to be barely any. So I always like to check it and make sure it's rolling well, but just barely any movement there, like frack, barely anything. And I'm gonna do that with the other four wheels and I'll catch you in a second. All right guys, so now we are fully set up, ready to ride. We got our Bronson Raws in there, we got our 51s, we got our 8.50 and our Thunder Trucks and our Diamond Helitide hardware. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I try to put in things that I think other videos left out that are really important to a deck setup, so hopefully you learned something new. And uh, be safe, go ride, and that's it. Catch you guys later.